The first half of the trading year is over, and it's the worst one in 50 years. But we're doing well here. This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so the first half of the year is over, and it ends with a thud as the market drops about 1% down into our support region, where we would look for the bulls to step in and try to take this higher in a C wave. We are in a corrective structure, and we are looking for bear formations to play out. So the question is, will the bulls take this higher? I'll get into that in just one second. But first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, the market has dropped down into our support region. So let's jump into the chart and take a look. All right, guys, so here we are on the 30 minute futures chart for the S&P 500. And uh, as you can see, we got the move down here into our support area. Then they tried to spike it back up and then came back down. So we could potentially still be starting a one, two to the upside, but this two is getting pretty deep. It looks like they're going to test this low and maybe move a little deeper into our support area. So the support area ends or Basically, the line in the sand is the 3713 area. We would like to see them hold that and then start the move higher from there if they can do that. If they continue to hold above this low, then this would just be considered a wave two and we'd look for a pretty explosive wave three up out of here. So the other option is that this is all of wave four up here at the top and we're in wave five down uh, or wave one of five down. And that would uh, bring us down below support towards the bottom of this low here. And then from there, we would look for a wave two bounce up towards 3825 to 3850, just depending on how low this move takes us. But if that's the case, this would be considered wave four of one, and we'd be in wave five of one down now, which should target, um, as I said, down here around this 3660 range, or possibly even a new poke low. So from there, again, we would look for a bounce in wave two of five back up towards the 3825 to 3850 region, just depending on how low this would target. Okay, so um, pretty easy and pretty straightforward what we're looking at here. Uh, off of this high, we're looking at this support zone for this wave B. If that can hold and they can come back and take out this high right here at 3823, I believe it was. If they can do that and take out that high, then we could be well on our way in wave C higher towards that 4000 to 4100 region. However, if they break this low, then we would be starting over in support and looking for a rally and see from there. And then again, guys, if they move down below this 3713 region, it becomes more likely that this is going to be wave five of three that should take us down near this low. And then we should look for a wave to bounce up towards that 3825 to 3850 area. So those are the two paths that we're tracking right now. Um, the bullish paths, if there are any, would have to morph out of here in a diagonal. So you would uh, need a lot more information to even begin to start talking about that. So right now we're looking at two bearish paths. Again, that A, B, and then C up towards that 4,000 to 4,100 region. To complete this wave A up here, then you would look for this B wave back down here and then C up higher towards that 42, uh, or I'm sorry, 4,300, 4,350 region for there. So real quick, just to recap, off of this high, if it's all of wave four, we would look for this move down to break this 3713 level in wave five of one. Once wave one completes, we would look for a wave two bounce up towards that 3825 to 3850 area. And then from there, we would look for a pretty strong move down in wave three. However, if they can hold above this support, above this support at 3713 or above this low here at 3741, uh, if they can hold above either of those and move higher then we are maintaining this B wave count and looking for a C wave higher at that point. All right, over on the NASDAQ, very similar setup um, with one difference. I don't have a wave four count on the NASDAQ because I just don't see this as an impulsive move down. So um, on the NASDAQ, they came down and touched support at 11,355. They're coming back and testing it now. If they do break support, we need to watch it, okay, because this could be considered a wave five down which would probably push down to a new low here, okay? And then we would get this A wave bounce after that. I would just consider this move down an extension of A, and then you would look for this A wave bounce after that. So as it stands right now on the NASDAQ, we are looking at uh, this being the completion of A and down in support for B. And if that can't hold, 
that we would look for an extension of A lower and then start this rally up in this A wave here up towards this 12,800 region. All right, guys, so it's pretty cut and dry on both charts. We're only tracking a couple different counts right now. Both are bearish and overall we'll be looking lower, but I do still think we have higher to go first before we get more uh, lows coming in. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link, and we'll take you right over to our website. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible plans, and they both come with a seven-day free trial because I want you to get in there and become part of our trading family before you ever spend a penny. In our first room, the Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, as well as all of your Elliott Wave questions answered. We trade the SPY and the QQQ, and we do swing trade them, which means our trades last anywhere from a couple days to a couple months, and that means we trade just a little bit less than a day trading room does. However, if you are looking for day trading as well as individual stocks, you need to check out PT's throne room. In there, you get day trading, individual stocks, plus everything you get in the Invest with Jacob room. You also get PT's reduced risk binary method that absolutely crushes the market. It's a very unique trading style that you kind of have to see to understand. And that's why we give you that seven day free trial so you can check it out. He started a challenge account where he put $4,000 into a small account and he is trading many ES futures using disciplined trading styles, averaging three to 4% gains in there. So he can show you how to build a small account into a large savings or retirement account. We would love to have you in here guys so we can make some money together. Key takeaways for today, we're watching two basic patterns. They need to hold support at 37.12 on the ES, and then we would look for a move higher from there. If they do break support, we could see uh, the completion of wave one of five down towards this 3660 30, uh, area, and then a wave to bounce up towards 38.25 to 38.50 from there. On the NASDAQ, Again, we are looking for them to hold support. However, if they break support, we could see an extension of this A wave down to a new low and then see this A wave rally up from there towards that 12,800 region. All right, guys, it's the weekend. It's the 4th of July. Everyone out there have a safe, happy holiday. Have a drink, light some fireworks, and have a wonderful weekend. I will talk to you next week.